Okay, so my book talk is on The Host by Stephanie Meyer. She's the same author who wrote like the Twilight series, so if you like that kind of stuff. Okay, so how did I discover this book? So I originally watched the movie, which was like really, really bad. And I was like, wow, this book must be terrible. But then I saw it in the library like a few weeks ago, and I was like, well, it can't be worse than the movie, so might as well read it and see. And I'm glad I did, because it's a lot better. <laughs> Um, why do I like this book? Or, um, I like this book even though I don't really like science fiction, like I really hate science fiction. But, um, it's written, like, so, like, in a way that it's not so sci-fi, like, it's, it's good to read if you, even if you don't like it, um, like science fiction. And I like it because it has such a creative plot and it has interesting characters that draws you in. Um, here's a quick kind of, like, summary, or not summary, but, like, of the plot, um, it takes place in a world that is completely invaded by aliens, or like souls is what they call them, and they're taking over the human race, and the book is based around the main character, Melanie Strider, which is one of the remaining humans on the planet, and the soul that is implanted into her to find the rest of the human survivors is Wanda, um, and both Melanie and Wanda are present inside her body, and they both con converse with each other. Which I find like really interesting because it switch point it switches point of views and pretty much like each of them have like an input on what's going on like in the story at the same time, which I find like really cool. Um, well, I think my classmates will like the book. Um, I think the host is a good is a good book for science fiction lovers and science fiction fiction haters. Um, the author also describes the book as a book that even even people who just like science fiction will like. Um, and I recommend it because I love the way it is written with like the different point of view switches. And I find it really interesting and different. And I will read some of the book. All right. I knew it would begin with the end, and the end would look like death to these eyes. I had been warned. The language I found myself using was odd, but it made sense. Choppy, boxy, blind, and linear, and possibly crippled in a comparison to many I'd use, yet still it managed to find fluidity and expression. Sometimes beauty, my language now, my native tongue. With the truest instinct of my kind, I'd bind myself securely <coughs> into the body center of thought, twine myself inescapably into its every breath and reflux, until it was no longer a separate entity, it was me. I felt the sedation wearing off and lucidity taking its place. I braced myself for the onslaught of the first memory, which would really be the last memory, the last moments this body had experienced, the memory of the end. I had been warned thoroughly of what would happen now. These human emotions would be stronger, more vital than the feelings of any other species I had been. I had tried to, pre to prepare myself. The memory came, and, it, and as I'd been warned, it was not something that could ever be prepared for. It seared with sharp color and ringing sound, cold on her skin, pain gripping her, li her limbs, burning them. The taste was fiercely metallic in her mouth, and there was a new sense, the fifth sense I'd never had, that took the particles from the air and transformed them into strange messages and pleasures and warnings in her brain. Sense. They were distracting and confusing to me, but it was, but not to her memory. The memory had no time for the novelties of smell. The memory was only fear. Fear left her in a vice, goading the blunt, clumsy limbs forward, but hampering them at the same time. To flee, to run, it was all she could do. They're right behind me now, loud and close. There are so many footsteps. I am alone. I've failed. Heat shot through my veins, and violent hatred nearly choked me. I had never felt such an emotion at this in all my as this all in all of my life. For another second, my revulsion my revulsion pulled me away from the memory. A high shrill, keening pierced my ears and pulsed in my head. The sound scraping through my airways. There was a weak pain in my throat. Screaming, my body ex explained. You're screaming. I froze in shock, and the sound broke off abruptly. Please, they cried. There is danger ahead. The danger is behind, I screamed back in my mind. But I see what they mean. A feeble stream of light coming from who knows where, shining on the end of the hall. It is not the flat wall or the locked door. The dead end I feared and expected. It, expected. it is a black hole. An elevator shaft, abandoned, empty, and condemned like a building. Once a hiding place, now a tomb. A surge of relief floods through me as I race forward. There is, no, there is a way. No way to survive, but perhaps a way to win. The emptiness swallows me, but my legs feel useless, my hands grip the air, claw through it, searching for anything solid. Cold, cold blows past me like a tornado winds. 
I hear the thud before I feel it. The wind is gone, and then pain is everywhere.